This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. The next set of dimensions to look at are angular and radial dimensions. We can find the angular dimensions in the dimensioning toolbox. And we can start with those, but we'll have to find the radial dimensions elsewhere. But we'll get to that later. First, however, I need to draw some lines. And I would suggest you draw along with me. I'm drawing three lines, any angle, any length, doesn't matter much. Now I'll start the dimension angular tools. And the first tool is angle size, and we'll start with that. But first, let's have a quick check of the dimension style settings. Geometry. I have Terminator inside on. The minimum leader is 3.5. In terms of units, the angle format is angle. In other words, we're seeing angles, not lengths. We're in degrees and decimals. And accuracy is two decimal places. I have trailing zeros on, so I will see extra zeros if necessary in the dimension itself. Tool is running. Now be sure to watch the prompts in the status line. First prompt says select start of dimension. I'm starting here at this endpoint. Left click. Then the next prompt says enter point on axis. What MicroStation is looking for here is the center of the arc that will be drawn, which will be the dimension line. In that case, that will obviously have to be this location here. So I snap to that location. And now I see the dimension being placed. Third prompt is select dimension endpoint. I'll snap to this end of the line. And now I can move the cursor in and out and locate the actual arc dimension line. You can automatically generate extension lines by taking the dimension out of the lines themselves. Or you can pull it back in and have the dimension displayed inside the lines. However, this clearly is not a very good idea because the arrows have popped outside. We can help solve that a little bit by going to the dimension settings and in the geometry section, changing the minimum leader to a smaller value. Change it to one and see what happens. Come back. And that works for that location there. I could change my minimum leader to a smaller value and get closer inside the lines if necessary. However, I'm going to pop this one outside anyway, just to be annoying. Place it there, left click. And now if I drag this way, I can now immediately place the next dimension along. So this is a dimension string. Left click and snap to that line end. And right click to stop the tool. And there are my dimensions neatly in place. Let me move this down a little bit for more visibility. Now, this is obviously really quite straightforward, provided you remember that you will need to select the center for the arc dimension line. Let's try the next tool. I'll undo that dimension placement. Next tool is angle location, which is very similar to the previous one, except that the dimension lines are stacked one above the other. Pop that one there. Drag this one over and snap to that, and you can see the effect. We now have separate dimensions from the original starting line. Undo that. Next tool is angle between lines. Now, this is even easier to use. Prompt says select first line. Prompt says select second line. And there's my dimension. Note that in this case, there are no extension lines. So something is obviously awry. Well, let's check the tool settings window. And let's expand the tool settings. And there's a problem. That should be on, and that should be on. In which case, I now see my extension lines. So I can place that there, or I can place it inside. We have the same limitations of placing the arrow between the lines. So again, a very simple tool. Let me close the extension piece. Now, the next two tools. Dimension actual arcs rather than lines in this case. 
Since I'm drawing an arc, I need to change the segment type from lines to arcs. So I'll press the tilde key. Now I have arcs. So there's the first vertex of the arc. Looking for the center. We'll make it there. And there's my arc. Use the tool. Arc size. Watch the prompts. Select start of dimension. That's there. Select dimension endpoint. That will be there. And locate the actual angle. There. So very straightforward again. And this tool, which is arc stacked, will stack one dimension above the other if you have an intermediate point on the arc itself that you want to dimension angle wise. Now let's work on the radial dimensions. Move those out of the way. Let me draw a circle to start with. Again, doesn't matter what size. And let's go and find some radial tools. Simplest way probably is to go to tools and dimensions and we'll open up the toolbox itself. And as a matter of interest, you might want to float this toolbox anyway, rather than open up the standard dimension toolbox from the tool frames. This one contains pretty much all of the dimensioning tools. So if you are using other tools besides the standard ones, then this will be a useful asset on the screen. Radial tools are here, and I've selected that. And now we get a fair number of choices for actually displaying dimensions. We'll start with the diameter. This is plain diameter. Note that we can also do diameter extended. We'll just start the diameter. And prompt is identify the element, which is the circle. Left click and drag. I get a couple of choices. I can drag the diameter outside the circle, or I can have it located inside the circle. Simply a choice. Let's extend it outwards and left click. The diameter symbol automatically appears at the beginning of the dimension. Let's change that to diameter extended. Left click on the object. And now we see the full diameter inside the circle but we extend the actual value outside of the circle. Same thing happens with the radius mode. Same basic concept. That can be inside or it can be outside. Radius extended, as you would guess, works similar to the diameter extended. Inside dimension with an outside value. And the last mode is to place a center mark. Identify the element and accept it. And I think we'll find that there's one there, but it's very, very small. So we need to change things, obviously. So let me undo that. Drag on the dimension style settings box and look at geometry and center mark. Let's change this to. Let's try four inches and see what happens here. Center mark, select the circle, and there's our center mark, just across at the center. As you've seen, these are very simple tools to use, and you typically use these for most dimensions of this type, but you don't have to use the radial tools necessarily. You can also use the standard dimensioning tools. Let me undo all those dimensions. And let's try using the dimension element tool. We'll start with the standard dimension element. And all we do is select the circle. And notice that immediately in the tool settings window, the actual options change. And they are actually displaying radial dimensions. This is so because we selected a circle. Our MicroStation knows that and has changed the tool options for us. We'll stick with the first one dimension radius, and we immediately see that the radius is popping into place. And this is essentially exactly the same as the first tool on the radial toolbox. Let's try the second one, which is dimension diameter with an extended leader. So this is an extended diameter setting, again, as we saw before. Or we can dimension in typical horizontal or vertical style. 
simply depends where you select the circle. And they're quite useful options, and sometimes quicker than actually starting the radial dimension tool. You can also, of course, use the dimension linear tool too. And I'm going to undo those previous dimensions so we can have a little space. We'll start with this one. Now, of course, you're simply selecting data points. Data point, data point, and extension. Now, the only drawback here is that the extension lines appear to contact the circle. But we can fix that if necessary. Let me undo that. Bring in the settings box again. And look at extension lines in the geometry tab. The extension value is fine. That simply extends it beyond the dimension line. We need to change the offset, which is from the snap point. Let's change that to 2. And let's try our dimension now. That's better. Now we have a gap between the circle and the extension lines. Looks a little better. Don't forget to turn this back to 0.5 when you are finished placing dimensions in that mode. Now having used that, of course, the dimension doesn't state that it is actually a diameter that you're measuring, but you could quite easily edit the text. Double click the text and add a diameter on the end of that. 